Hello friends, we're doing a video today on lab-grown versus mine diamonds. Both, but particularly lab-grown diamonds, have become super popular for us. We've had lots of new as well as existing jewellery designer customers asking to have collections set with lab-grown diamonds, and so I thought it was a good time to finally talk about it. I've got our lovely Mariana here, and she's been away um, and out of the office for a couple of months participating in a gemology course in London that she wanted to do for a long time. And so one of the main topics that she studied was diamonds. So we want to take the opportunity to share with you guys some information um, which we think could be relevant if you are a jewelry designer thinking of incorporating diamonds into your collection. So stay watching. If you guys are new here to this channel, welcome. I'm Kim, owner of Thai Design Distributors. We're a third generation family business since 1975, owning our manufacturing plant in Thailand where we specialize in producing high-end sterling silver and gold jewelry. We've got our own in-house range, but the majority of what we do is manufacturing exclusively for our jewellery designer customers. We've always had our head office in the UK and recently a support office in the US. Please do get familiar with this channel by watching my intro video, which gives you an insight about my background in the jewellery industry and the purpose of this channel. Lastly, please don't forget to like or subscribe to the channel for all of the latest tips and videos on jewellery manufacturing. So we're going to break it down into these points. The difference between natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds, from how they look to where or how they were made. As a jewellery designer, what to consider when deciding which stone to opt for, such as the environmental impacts. Getting the right information or asking the right questions to your supplier. So whether you're going direct to a diamond supplier or to the all-land manufacturer like myself, who's casting the metal and outsourcing the stones, in this case diamonds, to set into the jewellery pieces. Lastly, if you are a jewellery designer looking to incorporate diamonds into your jewellery, we're going to list a few reputable and independent lab-grown companies that we've done research on that you can potentially contact and inquire directly. Together with Mariana's new knowledge and experience, we've been picking her brain here on this topic. And so firstly, um, I think it would be great to know in simplistic terms a little more about natural diamonds versus lab-grown diamonds. So over to you, Mariana. Thank you, Kim. So mining diamonds are made from 99% of carbon and they're high pressure and high temperature and they're the crust of the earth. Most naturally occurring diamonds were formed between 1 billion and 3 billion years ago, 100 miles underground. And so the earth was hotter than it what is today, forming two kinds of rocks, eclodite and peridotite, and they stay there until two earth plates collide and cause what is called subduction, in the exact place where diamonds were formed. They are then brought to the surface in two other rocks, Kimberly and Leopardite. Fun fact, the last time diamonds were brought to the earth's surface was 20 million years ago, which explains the true rarity and value of the diamonds. And what about lab-grown diamonds? So lab-grown diamonds are man-made diamonds produced in laboratories with essentially the same physically, chemical and optical properties as a natural diamond. Diamond beauty, rarity and value inspire research to developing them in the lab. Yeah, and I think one common mistake that we sometimes hear is that lab-grown diamonds are fake diamonds, which isn't true, right? Yes, lab-grown diamonds have been in the market for a while now and they carry a long story with them. It starts when it was discovered that diamonds were made from carbon in 1797 by the English chemist Smithson Tennant and the research to create diamonds began in 1800s. Although producers didn't succeed until 1950s, this is due in part to the evolution of technology since apart from carbon, to form diamonds is crucial to have the correct high temperature and high pressure that usually only occurs in the core area of the earth. So it's taken a lot of time and chemistries needed to find how to create the exact recipe in the lab with the help of the high-tech machinery. Another fun fact, the announcement of this achievement to the world was made on the 15th of February in 1955, a day after Valentine's Day. This was deliberate in order to avoid conflicts with the natural diamond sales for the season. Thank you, Mariana, for those interesting facts. Now, let's fast forward to today. We've been hearing a lot about lab-grown diamonds. As a jewellery manufacturer, there were more designers requesting information about incorporating lab-grown diamonds into their jewellery. And I think it would be good to list a few factors to consider, all based on our experience with working with jewellery designer customers. I think one of the main things to consider is that a lab-grown diamond is a diamond. So chemically, physically and optically, is identical to a minor diamond. Yes, and it's crazy to think that that process, which took millions of years underground to form, can be mimicked in a lab in just a few weeks. 
Yes, we can appreciate that technology behind the lab diamonds has really advanced and it now allows companies to grow higher quality diamonds more rapidly and more cheaply. So here's a few pros and cons to consider here guys. Lab grown diamonds cost 10 to 30% less than mine diamonds. Great, let's say, if you're wanting a large engagement ring. <laughs> they are real diamonds. So like Mariana pointed out, lab grown diamonds are basically nearly identical to the physical, chemical and cosmetic characteristics of mine diamonds. They may even have better clarity, which makes them brighter. They're not as valuable though. Manufactured diamonds might look pretty, however, they aren't going to give you as much of a resale value. I think without getting too controversial in the matter, there's a fair bit of debate and heaviness with regards to the environmental impacts, both for mined and lab-grown diamonds. The lack of transparency makes it difficult to source accurate data when comparing the carbon footprints of mined and lab diamonds. It's fair to say that the carbon footprint for lab-grown diamonds isn't great, with the energy needed to produce a lab diamond being significant. However, many argue that they don't cause the same level of environmental damage as mining, which requires the removal of earth and consumes fresh water and fossil fuels. Air pollution and acid mine drainage from mining can contaminate water sources as well, and unethical diamond mining practices can result in human right abuses and destroy ecosystems. Now, some manufacturers may market their lab-grown diamonds as sustainable, and so that suggests that they're a more responsible option or supplier compared to others. But how can you be sure? Greenwashing can happen in any industry, even diamonds, and when a company uses the term environmentally friendly, the definition can be vague. This is when getting the right information is crucial. You want to ensure that the company you're buying the diamonds from can legitimately stand behind its sustainability claims, and this is what will help you determine whether you want to work with them or not. I think based on our experience as a jewellery manufacturer working directly with jewellery designers, we've in general definitely seen a significant change in customer expectations. It's a little bit like the video we did on Fair Mind Silver and Gold, where in our current environment, the ultimate consumer now expects certain things from jewellery brands. So let's say if you're buying a jewellery online, they expect a smooth transaction from when they buy the product all the way through to the after purchase support, but also full transparency on what they are purchasing and its origin, meaning where the materials may have come from and potentially any cost implications derived from that purchase. The fair mind and fair trade is just an example of two standards in the silver and gold industry and the choices available to say a jewelry designer who's passionate about tracing the metal all the way back to its source. I think we're in an age where consumers want the brands they support to not only make quality products but have the necessary information available at their fingertips, whether it's about how the company treats their employees, working conditions or reducing their amount of waste that they produce or what their carbon footprint is. Customers want to know exactly what they're buying. And just like jewellery, whether your customer's buying it for themselves or as a gift, that piece of jewellery will hopefully be worn for decades. And I feel that we have a social responsibility to provide as much consumer education and transparency as possible. So if a brand is making that conscious decision, for example, to buy lab-grown diamonds, any lab-grown diamond company should explain their entire process as to how they create their lab-grown diamonds with explanatory pages, videos, etc particularly as lab-grown diamonds are a rapidly growing trend in the industry, which I hope will steer you into the right direction in your decision-making. Well, my friends, that's it for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for all of our latest videos. Thank you, Mariana, for providing us with some core cool, um, and helpful information, and I hope it was really helpful for you guys watching. Thanks again, take care, and bye.